Welcome to this month's Town Administrator's Report. I'm David Watts Jr. and with me is our Town Administrator, Steve Mayo. Steve, welcome. Uh, thank you, David. How are you? And doing great. How are you? Excellent. We Excellent. took an ex elongated summer we vacation we this did. year. We had so few days of summer that really were summer that we needed to <laughs> we needed to get some vacation in. So <laughs> But we're going to we're going to kick off the fall with uh, a really interesting show that we're going to talk about the Albion Cultural Exchange. And with us is Dan McGrath our recreation director who also administers both the Civic Center and the Albion Cultural Exchange, ACE. Yep, thank you for having me, David. Appreciate Welcome. it. Welcome. Um, I had the uh, great um, uh, honor of uh, touring the facility a month ago. And um, it looks, it's coming along really well. We're progressing. It's, it's certainly a work in progress and you know, we took over the, the management of the facility in, in May. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's kind of my busy time of year. So May, June, July, August, I'm not able to do a lot of stuff with this facility. Of course, I didn't know what I was doing at that point in time um, <laughs> because I had to focus on my summer programming. But we're, You're we're not really... supposed to admit that. Oh, I admit, I, I admit <laughs> things I don't know. I, I, I can't help it. It's my Irish guilt. Um, but we're, we're kicking off and, and going strong now. So. Yeah. And uh, just, just a little... Uh, history for people uh, uh, who are interested in Wakefield history. That was originally a post office, yep. 1923. Uh, it was also a bank for a time. Sure was. And then for a long time, it was the offices of the Municipal Gas and Light Department. Yep, yep. A lot of, a lot of history has gone through that building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're hoping to make more. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, one of, one of the big things with the uh, space is that you're not just doing exhibits, but you're doing events. Correct. So, you know, when, when we took over the facility in May, uh, there, was, there was a bunch of art shows already planned. And, you know, obviously we continue with, with the events that were on schedule. And uh, the first one was the uh, Wakefield High School AP Art Show. Mm -hmm. That was there. Um, I had the pleasure of, of seeing, meeting with the students and seeing their artworks and it was wonderful. Um, and then we had after that the uh, From the Ground Up art exhibit, which was done by the uh, Arts, Arts Collaborative of Wakefield. And again, got to meet some great artists through that. Um, and as they were picking up their work at the end of that show, I got to pick their brains on things that they'd like to see in the facility, how it should run, things that can you know, be done differently or be done better, mm -hmm. um, which was a great experience for me. Um, and now we have a, a great show going on currently with uh, Paul D'Angelo, a, a famous um, comic, not just locally, but nationally. Um, he has The Art of Stand-Up uh, by Paul D'Angelo, and it's a wonderful show. I hope everybody come out and see it. Um, there's shows tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday, um, next Wednesday, I'm sorry, next Friday, and, um, and uh, they're all from six to eight, and they're all free of charge. So it's, it's an absolute wonderful show. He's done some amazing works. Um, some of them he will sell reprints of. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. And he himself is, a, is just a wonderful person to talk to. So Well, and just to yeah. put it into context, we're taping the show on, on September 20th. Okay. So That's, that way that you is can tonight. figure because, yep. you know, we'll, we'll be, uh, the show will be running past, uh, yep. past those right. dates. Paul from a, a great Wakefield family, the Murphy family. Yep. Um, and um, Paul... Uh, you know the the art the art of art of comedy the art of stand up is that yep, what it the is? Art of stand up. Yep. Um, I think one of those nights he's actually running from the show to a bit he's doing at Giggles mm -hmm. the same night. So I, I uh, I'm I'm actually going to go tonight yep. um, and and take a look at his work. So and he's actually doing a, a roast for Jay for Jay Leno next week. Yeah, so, so he's, he's really, very well known. Very well known. Yeah. And, has done great shows for the town of Wakefield for fundraisers. And, and a great like person. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Over the summer, you had a series that, that looked pretty interesting, too. Storytelling Open Mic Nights. We did. We had, so I was, I was approached by a few people on the Arts Council, mm -hmm. um, Jess Sudich and um, Marlene Valdeswich, mm -hmm. and they wanted to talk about doing some potential shows. And I said, well, what kind of skills do you guys have? What do you do? Mm -hmm. Again, art. It's not my thing. You know, I, I can barely draw a stick figure, so you don't want me doing this kind of thing. And um, they said, you know, here's what we have kind of in our mind, what we want to do. And I said, well, this sounds great. How soon do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. And I think they were surprised at the answer. Mm -hmm. My thing is we have the space available. A way, uh, uh, an open space to me is a sin, whether it's a field, a gym, or whatever it might be, in this case, a gallery. Let's find a way to use it. So they put together some shows. Uh, Jess and, and her spouse, Lori Strauss, who's Wakefield Wake residents, 
um, both very talented, have been, um, I think Jess worked for The Ellen Show for a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, Lori has done a ton of improv and comedy in Boston, as has Jess. And they said, here's what we want to do. We want to do some storytelling nights. We're going to be up in front and we're going to tell stories. And then we're going to engage the audience to come in and do their own stories. Mm -hmm. So we did uh, five shows in the summer. They were well attended and not knowing what to expect. If you told me there would have been 10 people there, I would have been thrilled. Apparently there was 20 to 40 every single night. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. So they had, they had some great positive traction there and we're looking to do more. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's just because you know, summer's over. We think we have a, something there. So mm -hmm. we do more of that stuff. And we might even roll those into classes. Yeah. And then we're putting together, um, based off of other connections through there, we're putting on some um, improv classes coming up soon and improv nights mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with, a, with another local guy, Brian Augusto. So Brian's a local Wakefield guy. Um, he wants to bring in some uh, improv people that he's worked with, Improv Boston and the Improv Asylum, and, and do some bits there. So mm -hmm. these are things that, that's growing. And you know the, the building from... Um, from what I had seen previously, was used as um, very much a visual arts gallery, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. My goal is to expand that beyond mm -hmm. visual arts, because mm -hmm. arts can be so many different things. It can mm -hmm. be dance, it can be um, theater, it can be music, it can be food, it can be all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. so that, those are things that we're trying to bring in. I, I love what you said, that a, uh, a vacant field a vacant oh, uh, it's, venue it's a sin. is a sin. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly the uh, when the town council you know, kind of reorganize this. That's exactly what their their feeling was, is that really to utilize this to the max. Well, and the more events that are in there, the more people are going to be looking for what the next thing is. Right, correct. You know. And, and the more and, people who hopefully go downtown and get dinner at, or lunch or what have you were yeah. at some of one of the local restaurants. So that's the thought of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, in fact, uh, when, when we met, Dan and I talked uh, about uh, Boston Pen People, which is a... New England-based uh, group of fountain pen collectors and historians yeah. is coming in October 14th right. for a meeting from noon to 3 and uh, bringing along Mass Scribes, which is a statewide organization of calligraphers. So hopefully, and it'll be open to the public. It's right. not a, uh, a private thing at yeah. all, and hopefully people will come in and, and uh, learn a little bit about calligraphy right. and fountain pens and maybe find an interest. And after that, your group can go down and get some uh, get dinner or lunch or whatever. Late yeah, lunch, early yeah. Dinner. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee, perfect. Coffee, yep. Perfect. Yep. The new brothers. Yes. Yep, <laughs> yep. Um, let's take a, a little bit of a, a visual tour uh, through it so that people can see what it looks like. And um, this is familiar pretty much to everyone who, who has been along Albion Street. But um, we'll start on the second floor, and the second floor is intended to be rental studios, correct? Yeah, so we'd love to do you know, rental studios or offices. Um, I, I know there's a need there and a demand um, based off my conversations with the artists that I've spoken with already. Mm -hmm. um, they're always looking to get out of their own garage or basement or <laughs> office in their home and have a place to, to be able to, to do their art and eventually show their art. So if we have artists who are upstairs and they sit there and have a bunch of pieces that they're ready to show, well, now we can carry the show downstairs. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. the, and this gives us a great opportunity to make this a self-sustaining building. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the recreation department as it is is self-sustaining. Um, we are currently paying the bills for, for a, a building that um, isn't bringing us in anything in yet. Right. Um, and that's something we want to be able to do. And, and that way we can continue to grow that facility. Because right. there's, there's more plans beyond just the second floor. Well, and that was kind of the, the, the reason behind the idea of rental studios in the first place yeah. was to help pay the bills. That's right. That's right. You know, right. and and to provide local space for whether it's a collaboration to write or um, you know, like you said, artists where yep. they can you know get out of their garage, right. their their spare room, and collaborate with others. And, well, and there are artists yeah. who just don't have the space right. for, have the space. for yeah. a studio right. or right. or anything like that. Yep. You know, and the the light in some of these spaces in the building are just beautiful. Is just beautiful anyway. But this is another one of the spaces that uh, eventually will be, you know, great storage space. Um, this was a feature that I really loved was yeah. the circular yeah. staircase. Yep. You know, I know the ADA folks will probably yeah, it's, go it's, it's, absolutely. It's, it's pretty cool, but uh, <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. But again, um, 
uh, you know, and, and you mentioned that, that one group in town is, is thinking about uh, taking up space here, and that's the Room to Write. The Room to Write has, had reached out almost immediately after we took over um, the management of the facility and said, we've always been looking for a home. Yeah. How can we get in here? And, you know, after I talked to Colleen um, quite a bit, uh, Colleen Getty, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I found her, you know, to be energetic and enthusiastic and really a magnetic personality. And, and I said, we're going to have a home for you here. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not going to be today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Mm -hmm. um, but when we do, you're going to have the pick of the litter. And, and I love the, the uh, passion behind what they do. Mm -hmm. um, I, mm -hmm. I love that they, that they need a certain space that's quiet mm -hmm. um, where they can, can do their process and, and do their projects. Um, and multiple, multiple, multiple people can be in one space at the same time. Right. Um, so we've already arranged for that to happen. And, and once we get to that point, mm -hmm. they're our first tenant. And, uh, and they, they want to be able to do meetings downstairs. Mm -hmm. They want to be able mm -hmm. to you know, have shows come in to, to distribute, to show their writings or their illustrations, whatever it might be. Sure. Um, and they're just a great asset to the community. So yeah. they'd be a lot of fun. And they have been for quite a few years. Yes, they have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're actually one of the partner organizations with Boston Penn people. Yep. So this is the uh, downstairs gallery yep. area. Yep. This is looking towards the back. And this actually raises a question that you and I talked about during the tour. Um, one of the problems with this building has always been handicapped access. That's right. And there's a plan for that? There's a plan for that. So actually that, that window on the back left there uh, as I understand it, we're going to have that removed. That's going to become an entrance that'll be sloped down into the building. We'll have to get rid of the heating element there, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll come off the back parking lot. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a nice, easy access that we can get people in there to, to be able to see all the wonderful works and be part of all the wonderful events that we plan on having. Right. So people will, um, if handicapped need access through there, they will come through the old bank parking lot? Yes. Yep. And the uh, new owners of the... Santander building, which yeah. will be converted, have been very helpful and uh, in making sure that that's open and accessible. Fantastic. As they change your thing. So that's already been looking at. The other issue is that with those handicap ch um, accessibility changes, there's some drainage issues that we need to work out. So it's all kind of going to come together mm -hmm. at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Are these drainage issues that have existed for oh, a while in that space? Forever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Way before our time. <laughs> <laughs> so town improvement comes with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. And you can see there are some pieces here from the from the show in August. And I really wish that we had some of the before pieces of the gal uh, pictures of the gallery space because it was less than aesthetically pleasing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and, and actually, you know, the art that's on the wall there. That was actually art that was donated by folks who are part of the Arts Cooperative of Wakefield. Uh, we, the, the last show was in um, June. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing I asked the Arts Cooperative, I said, you know, we're going to have some groups that will come in here through the summer, and I want art on these walls right. 365 days a year. Yeah. Can we, or 366, whatever, you know, if we have the yeah, leap yeah. year. I said, can, how can we make that happen? And they reached out to their conglomerate and said, hey, who can donate some art? So this stuff has been up throughout the, uh, mm -hmm. throughout the, the summer up until Paul's show. I love these two pieces on the right. Uh, two with wonderful the jazz pieces. theme. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Another view of, of the space. And this was set up for the storytelling at the time. Yep. And we made the investment in the in the equipment for the for the speakers and the uh, the receiver and the mics just to make sure that we could have these events. So we're already putting money into it to make sure that we can get something out of it going forward. Fantastic. Fantastic. And there's also a plan for the uh, for the space that people came to pay their bills, correct? There, there is. I mean, I, you know, if if things shake out the way I like, that there's there's a potential where we could have a group in there who could, you know, potentially do a coffee house during the daytime. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too far into that because I don't want to yeah. out anybody at this time, and nothing's set in stone, and we haven't even had conversations in a or while. Jinx but, yeah. but but or if jinx but it. if we do. Um, that would be a great serving area for that group to take their orders or serve speak to people on the go. Sure. Have some, some seating around, have some live music going sure. on, art on the walls. Really be a wonderful concept. But it's also a, a great place to have some brochures and things Absolutely. for for shows and, and yep. artists in Wakefield. Yep. You know? Yep. This is just <laughs> bizarre. Um, this is something you and I talked a little bit about, uh, an idea that my wife had talked to me about. 
uh, about having a piano that could go out on the sidewalk for people yeah. to just play once in a while. Yeah, I don't know how that one itself would get out there as that thing is heavy as all can be. Right, right. But yes, I, it, it'd be an interesting concept to be able to do something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. And especially people walking up Albion Street, hearing some music and then right. maybe just yeah. find and, their way inside. And one thing that, you know, uh, some people who, you know, there's a few people who I've really relied on for this space. Mm -hmm. One idea that, that that's come up is what if we had a uh, silent movie night mm -hmm. and somebody was in the back playing the, the piano live for, like the for, for, for that show. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've discussed it and that's another way where this, this item could come mm -hmm. into play. There's also, an, and I don't have the contact information, but there's a gentleman who's, who's played out at the American Heritage Museum a few times and he does silent pictures with music. Yep. The way they used to do it in the old theaters. Right. You know, as he's watching the film. Right. He's creating the music. That's what we'd love to do. You know? Yep. So a lot of really... Uh, Wakefield's always been an artistically strong community. And that's something that I wasn't aware of before this facility came, came into my, you know, under, under my umbrella. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of talented people out there who have a lot to offer. And, and uh, thankfully, they're coming, coming out of the woodwork now to, to bring some new ideas to us. Yes. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and that's the best part of it. But, um, uh, you know, and, and looking forward, it's going to be another reason for people to come to the downtown. Yeah, yeah, the, the relevancy and the vibrancy of downtown America, not just in Wakefield, but across the country, is a, uh, is a challenge yeah. today. Um, people aren't coming downtown to do their big retail shopping anymore like they used to. You're too young. When you and, <laughs> when you and I grew up in Wakefield, yeah. you know, there was no mall. There was no, there was certainly no Amazon or anything like that. Right. But there were a number of um, stores downtown, Park Snows, J.J. Newbury, um, yeah. Grants, I think, as well. Grants, uh, Woolworths. Woolworths. So um, there was a lot of, you know, yeah, retail. Yeah, there was an A&P. and p Food market. Fisher there was Jewelry, First I National. Think. Yeah. So it was a little bit different. So we've got to have another reason to come down. And, and the entertainment is the reason. Yeah. So, um, well, this and this will great. dovetail nicely with the, what the library has been doing, uh, especially with the jazz nights during yep. the summer, which just completed. Um, you know, uh, all of this just adds, but it also brings up the question, we did a show a few years ago and, and the subject has kind of gone quiet for a while, but there was a proposal to turn uh, Albion Street between Main Street and North Avenue into an arts district. I, How I does this it, fit in well, with I that? Where fits, are we with that? It fits in completely. Yeah. And if, you, if you, you look at it, we have different signage, different banners mm -hmm. on Albion Street. The lighting has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been dropped down. Uh, we've shortened the distances across Albion Street. Mm -hmm. You know, all the, all the planners that we look at will tell you that you know, people that you want people to get out on the street and walk around, but there are people that are, you know, hesitant mm -hmm. to cross a, a wide street. And Albion, you don't think of super wide, but for some people it is. Mm -hmm. So those bump outs are really to not only calm traffic in mm -hmm. itself, but to allow for a, if an easier, you know, traversing across the street. Mm -hmm. And you are going to see that same sort of um, the, uh, uh, system in theory go right down Main Street as we do, you know, as the Envision, you know, 2000 comes through yeah, or 2020 yeah. and we, we, we do that. So that's kind of, you know, I think, think of Albion Street as a kind of a preview yeah. of, you know, nicer lighting, flowers, you know, um, uh, nicer sidewalks, wider mm -hmm. sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Think of that maybe a sidewalk wide enough to have a piano on to have people play it, you know, and, and stop and do it. So yeah, that that is all part of that whole kind of, I call it kitschy, that kitschy district, and you know, go and look at the um, at the banners on Albion Street. I think they're really fun mm -hmm. to look at, and they all the the you know Albion all is a, is a um, the word Albion is all looking at somebody. You know, whether it's what the item font is on this or what other fonts are. So that's why you see that Albion on all different fonts. And Jim McDonald, our um, communications director, did a great job developing that those uh, banners, and they really are very. Uh, uh, very cool. I still have one in my office. <laughs> it, just keeps, it keeps been hanging in there for the last few years. Yeah. And that was done with a, a grant through MassWorks. You know, we got a million dollar grant through the state to, mm -hmm. to put that street together. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, much like we've been able to do in the Albion Cultural Exchange, getting, you know, 
thirty thousand here, twenty thousand here, or a hundred thousand dollars here mm -hmm. from the state. We've used very little town taxpayer money on that, mm -hmm. if anything. So mm -hmm. it's been a great, uh, it's been a great, you know, process. And perfect. And and it will it will hopefully uh, create more awareness amongst town so. people. I think so. You know. Yeah. So when we when we brought this all together and when we decided to go this route, um, I picked up the phone and I called uh, I called Dan. I said, "Listen, I'm gonna come over and talk to me. I got something to talk to you about." <laughs> and he doesn't hesitate. He says, "Just we said, I'm gonna learn a lot. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it work." And he absolutely has it from the the uh, enthusiasm and the vibrancy and the reaching out to people, to the streamlining of how do you get in there, which was an issue before, mm -hmm. to um, just being a positive influence. Um, and I know what he's doing. He was going to build this rec department into this huge department that does so much for the community. I know what he's doing. <laughs> and that's okay, because that's what he should be doing. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I, I think that we all couldn't be more pleased than um, what's happening and how, how it's being handled. And uh, even the stuff you did in the summer. Yeah, sure. With, with some of the, you know, we, the little... Um, we have a little Lego class. Little Lego we class little, is great. Little mm -hmm. yoga class, uh, yeah. an adult tap dance class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just something to start, just to yeah. get bodies through the door. I shouldn't say even even what you did. Those were great things. They were well, you know, things. one of the things that, that really kind of pushed this whole idea of the arts in Wakefield was, was it last summer or the summer before, they had artists painting the barriers around the, yes. the, yeah, yeah. the outdoor yeah. barriers for yeah. the restaurants. Yeah. And uh, although a lot of them have now ended up at the pit, know. you know, it was it was a great way to make I know, I know. yeah, we, we, you know, we otherwise ugly yeah. things a little more yeah. uh, we actually did get some nicer barriers with flowers, but in the beginning, <laughs> when we're all in the throes of what are we gonna do to, to help, yeah, that there were, were great things. Yeah. And that wasn't just Wakefield, that was some other community yeah. that did that too, which was nice to see. But that's that's also yet another uh, possibility for Ace is in the summer when people are dining outside more, you know, Public Kitchen has the front that opens up like mm. yep. restaurants in the North End and, and some of the other restaurants, you know, like Sabatino's have their outdoor patio for right. the summer. Yep. Um, hopefully, you know, they'll hear something going on over at Ace and kind of wander in and discover something new. Or even hopefully we have something that's going on there that people want to attend and then they can right. go out to the other spaces, you know? Yeah, um, this, works this, both ways. There's a lot of possibilities there and, you know, a lot of people coming through my door with a lot of energy, excitement, positivity. Yep. And um, you know, my goal is just to make them feel welcomed and uh, valued. Yep. And um, tell them, again, I don't have all the ideas, but I have the space. You tell me what you want to do and when you want to do it, and we'll find a way to get it done. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. always the way I've done things. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I still have a lot to learn about this space, and I still have a lot of things that need to be done there. But Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither, neither will this place. We're going to take our time, and we're going to do it right. Right, right. So what do you have coming up? You have so some things we, scheduled. We have, a, that. we have a bunch of things coming up. So, uh, you know, we have... You know, obviously the, the Paul D'Angelo show right now, but then in the month of October, the Ice Cover of Wakefield is going to be doing their Critters and Creatures um, show. That's going to be the month of October. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be doing some art, uh, adult art workshops, which will be floral workshop, a kissing ball workshop, and a holiday yarn tree. Uh, we have various youth programs that are going to be in there. We're working with um, a group called Making a Star. Uh, mm -hmm. They do a lot of arts-based things. They're doing Tinker Art a Barbie Deluxe workshop where the kids actually will build their own uh, wood um, dollhouse. Mm -hmm. we're, wow. we're really trying to ride that train of, yeah. of what, what's hot, and that's one of the hot things of Barbie stuff. Uh, we're, doing a <laughs> we're doing a fashion design class. We're uh, doing a Taylor Swift bling class where they'll make their own necklaces, wristbands, wow. that kind of stuff. Again, riding that hot train. That, that'll attract a lot of the younger right? people. Right, yeah. absolutely. Which is, which is what we want to encourage and, in the arts know, now. We want to get more people involved in that space. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. We have a witches and uh, wizards program that's going to come up, and we're doing an adaptive kaleidoscope program. So wow. working with the special needs community to get them in here just to do arts once a month. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. We have some adult improv shows, which I mentioned before, that we're working on. We're doing a drop-in in art with uh, uh, events with the Arts Collaborative of Wakefield. They're mm -hmm. going to do that, I think, on Wednesday nights, one time, one month, the uh, second month, of uh, second week of the month and Tuesday mornings as well. So we kind of have that, that oh, different demographic great. there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Arts Collaborative has a spring art show and exhibit that's coming up uh, in April. Um, there's going to be their artisan uh, sale in December. Um, we're working on photography classes with local photographer Lenny Malvone, who's a mm -hmm. wonderful guy and mm -hmm. has some great work. 
Um, the Children's Playhouse of Wakefield is a group that I've worked with for a long time. Um, we can't currently house their program at the uh, ACE because of Paul Show. They also have 52 kids in this program, so it's really <laughs> grown by leaps yeah. and bounds very quickly. Um, so they'll eventually be there. We're working with a quilting group to potentially do a quilting show in there. Um, Theatricals some, is where the Civic Center might come in. Right, we might yeah. need to. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we'll look potentially some hip hop dance classes, uh, black box theater nights. Um, we're talking about doing a coffee house or open mic night for teens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with some silent film nights. Uh, we have the pen people coming in. The Chamber of Commerce is going to do a paint and sip night. So we have a lot of balls in the air right now. We're actually even talking to the barbecue broker, a local company, about maybe doing some barbecue classes there. Mm. You know, I found out, you know, when you turn 35 or older, you do one of two things. You either go to, you know, U.S. history uh, war stuff or, or you go into barbecue. Well, I chose the barbecue route. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I've been in there for a little while now. So, you know, how to, how to trim meats or how to make um, rubs, that kind of stuff. So we're talking about those kinds of things. We just want to bring in different elements to that space sure, and, and be used in a variety of ways to, to attract a variety of people. Sure. And, and sure. I think that the paint and sip nights are very popular. Yes. Um, and I've had a lot of uh, friends and family members that have done that. I'm looking forward to that one myself. Not that anyone will ever see what I paint, but uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully um, uh, partaking in that one because yeah. I've had a lot of friends that really enjoy doing that. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, th that'll just be, be pretty cool yep. to do so. Yeah. Now, are there ways, because you're responsible for both spaces, are there ways that you can use um, ACE and the Civic Center to build in, in both places. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I already have people who are crawling looking for, you know, space of the Heritage Room for whatever it might be at the Civic Center, a, a meeting, a, mm -hmm. a, a breakfast, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I can't always accommodate them. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, we did actually when we took over the facility yeah. back, in, back in May. The, um, the Wake Up Coalition was looking for a space to have their annual breakfast. Sure. Heritage Room wasn't available. We kicked them down to the, to the ACE building. Mm -hmm. And that got... 50 yeah. people who yeah. otherwise wouldn't have known about that space or been through that space through the door, right. which brought new ideas right. across my desk. And so it worked. It worked, and out, and it worked great. out great. Yep. 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 One of the biggest problems with any space like this, and and I I hear about it, you know, in a, in other communities that I've been researching articles on, um, is how to let people know it's happening. Right. How are you going to accomplish that? Because, you know, it isn't like, again, when we were younger, when there were multiple ways of yep. getting the word out that people took advantage of at the time. Sure. So we have a great email database for all of our programs that we use. And that's, that's our first main thing. Mm -hmm. After that, we go to Facebook. And, you know, my admin, she's wonderful, Karen. She puts everything on Facebook for me, and I share it to the four main Facebook groups that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. um, not that there's not a lot of them, but I'm part of four, and those are the ones that I mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. And then we have our town's communications director, Jen McDonald, who is just an amazing asset to the community. I send something to her, and she does her magic. She, will, <laughs> exactly. she has it on the town billboard. She has it um, in the in the daily item. Mm -hmm. um, Kiosks. Yeah. She does it. She does everything. I, I don't know how she does all the things that she does, and uh, we're able to get word out. So we've been very successful this way. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dan, for, oh, thank you for, for coming in and thank you for uh, doing a great job. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, in the future look for an update. Can't wait. You know, maybe uh, maybe do an update. Maybe my will be better than I think. Shows. Maybe I'll bring it in, but, <laughs> but I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> but as as we come toward the the end of this show, we have some other business to talk about. We have regular town meeting coming up. Regular town meeting, and the way to remember that is that um, we have the annual town meeting and the regular town meeting. And just go alphabetically. The annual town meeting is earlier in the year. Regular is later in the year. Um, yeah, that's going to be no, uh, Saturday, November 18th. Yeah. Um, and this really is kind of the business town meeting. It's where we wrap up kind of uh, what happened last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, we, we give an annual report to show how we did, um, you know, what uh, reserves we have left. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, you know, and then we figure out how we're going to balance, balance mm -hmm. the budget. Mm -hmm. So the warrant is open, and any 10 citizens can put whatever they want on the uh, warrant. It's an open town meeting, and that's mm -hmm. what happens. And I think that that's open until October 13th, Friday, October 13th or so. Okay. And, um, yeah, I think that we'll have, uh, we are going to have a, uh, 
article uh, besides the business articles. There will be an article about um, a um, stretchier energy code, I think mm -hmm. it's called, mm -hmm. uh, that is a lot of communities are adopting across the um, across the uh, Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And who knows what else comes in? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. But it should there. be done that one day. So come down. I'll be at the. We're back um, at the uh, Galvin. Uh, Memorial, uh, Veterans Memorial Auditorium, which is a great right. place to have a town But meeting. it's also nice that it's on a Saturday. It's also nice that it's on a Saturday. You know, people yes. don't have to rush home and, no. and then rush to town meeting. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.